Welcome mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, sa ating God's Word for Today devotional. If it is your first time to join with us, thank you for joining in and welcome. At salamat sa Panginoon na makapatuloy tayo sa series natin na libro sa Nehemiah. At dito na tayo sa Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 9 to 12 for today. Si Nehemiah na tagapamahala, ang pari at iskribang si Isra. At ang mga libeta na nagturo sa bayan ay nagsabi sa buong bayan, Ang araw na to ay banal sa Panginoon ninyong Diyos. Huwag kayong tumangis ni umiyakman. Sapagkat ang buong bayan ay umiyak ng kanilang marinig ang mga salita ng kautusan. Pagkatapos ng kanyang sinabi sa kanila, Humayo kayo sa inyong lakad, kumain kayo ng masarap na pagkain, at uminom kayo ng matamis na alak. At magpadala kayo ng mga bahagi sa mga walang naihanda sapagkat ang araw na to ay banal sa ating Panginoon. Huwag kayong malungkot sapagkat ang kagalakan sa Panginoon ng inyong kalakasan. Sa gayoy napatahimik ng mga libeta ang buong bayan na sinasabi. Kayo'y tumahimik sapagkat ang araw na to ay banal sapagkat kayo'y kayong malungkot. Huwag kayong malungkot. Ang buong bayan ay humayo sa kanila, kanilang lakad upang kumain at uminom at magdala ng mabahagi at para gumawa ng malaking kasays- kasayahan sapagkat kanilang naunawaan ang mga salitang ipinahayag sa kanila. Grief and joy. Pwede ba magsasama ang grief and joy? They were grieving and at the same time they were joyful. Now, as they hear the law of God read by Ezra for six hours, mayroong profound effect ito sa mga tao. They wept because they were convicted by the Holy Spirit through the reading of the Word of God. Kaya nga, totoo talaga na ang salita ng Panginoon is like a sharp sword that reprove and correct us. Sa 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 to 17, ang banal na kusulatan, all scripture, is inspired by God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof and correction. Kailangan nating tandaan ito because the purpose why God gave that scripture is for us to, to be trained, to be righteous. Kaya nga si Nehemiah and the other leaders ay di encourage sa mga tao. Sabi nila, This day is holy to the Lord, your God. Do not mourn or wait. They were grieving because they were convicted, but they do not need to stay mourning. Isang, isang magandang bagay na ma-recognize natin ang isa ano ang rason that can grieve us? What is the thing that can grieve us? And here, it is our sinfulness. We should be thankful na kung nagkagawa tayo ng kasalanan and we become guilty, when we rebel and transgress the will of God, dapat magpasalamat tayo. Otherwise, kung hindi tayo ma-convicted, Ibig sabihin, we are already hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 13. We need not to remain broken and grieving mercilessly. Kailangan ba ito? Katulad tayo sa bola. The ball, when it falls, it can bounce back from, from its fall and it will bounce back with, with uh, greater strength. Katulad din sa atin, kung may mga crisis sa buhay natin, it should be not a reason for us to be grieving all the time because we can have the strength from God. The grace of God and His forgiveness is sufficient para sa atin. 
Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 4, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. That is, ang totoong joy is preceded by brokenness of sin. That's the sequence of things. Kailangan magkaroon tayo ng brokenness and a uh, feeling that we are dis disparate and undeserving. Then, we will be able to appreciate the grace of God. The grace of God is not given because we deserve it, but because we don't deserve sa mga biyaya ng Panginoon. Certainly, the people of Judah felt sad because they were, they were aware of their sins. However, they could lift up their spirits in joy because of the, the great work God, is do, God was doing in their midst. Indeed, it's the goodness of the Lord that leads us to repentance. Romans 2 verse 4. Hindi kailangan na we are going to um, brush aside our brokenness. We, in fact, we should recognize that we are broken, but not dwell there because God can give healing. At the end of the day, nakikita natin na sinimaya at ang kanyang matauhan, pumili sila sa kasiyahan. The joy of the Lord is their strength. All the people went their way to eat and drink and to send portions and to make great rejoicing. Why? Because they had understood the words that were declared to them. They were grieving, yet rejoicing at the same time. Yet our joy for having been forgiven, or yes, our joy for having been forgiven becomes sweeter when we remember how great sin, sinners we have been. Kung malimutan natin kung ano tayo, itong anong uring makasalanan tayo, hindi tayo maging grateful for the grace of salvation and forgiveness. This is a paradoxical, paradoxical truth. Paradox that is impressed by the Spirit that we should appreciate as He works in our lives. May God bless us upon this meditation sa salita ng Panginoon. So ito. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Bless this to our bodies and souls need that it can encourage us, Lord, that despite sa mga kahirapan, we still will continue to um, serve you with joy in our hearts. Sana po ang, ang uh, <clears throat> kahirapan na aming uh, ramdaman ay hindi maging hadlang Panginoon that we will not experience the joy because, Lord, ang kahirapan namin ay aming kami din ang masisi because sa mga choices namin, sa mga priorities namin. But thank you, Lord, that even this morning, we have the reason, Lord, to rejoice because you are God, your word is true, and you are always there. Salamat sa lahat at ito ay dalangin namin sa pagkakaroon po ni Jesus. Amen.